Hello, the practitioner here. Bachelor of Science student, chemistry major, mathematics minor, magician, parapsychologist, technical agnostic, Fortean skeptic, Aspie, former world traveler, and proud Canadian. The only reason the, that I'm making this video in response to Penn and Teller bullshit are Mount Rushmore, I agree that the American Manifest Destiny idea is one of the stupider things I've ever seen. Canada, fortunately, was not so... Uh, was uh, Canada's par uh, parliament, of course. Um, fortunately, we, we, did, we, we avoided that particular screw-up. Yes, we too, like the U.S., um, violated practically every treaty we had with, um, you know, with, uh, with, that we made with the natives. Um, we left the... Um, you know, we passed an act which forced some... Uh, well, some roughly 98% of all uh, First Nations in our country into residential school system and attempting to quell their culture with our superior Christian ideals. Unfortunately, that was probably the dumber mistake in the process. If we wanted to quash an idea like First Nations, uh, uh, like uh, like spirit, like uh, like sweat lodge ceremonies, we should have done it by debunking their scientific by debunking their claims through scientific peer review and working through logic. One of the things which I think our country has not done. <laughs> You know, one of the things which, our, unfortunately, our country learned the hard way. <laughs> you know, our country's institutions learned the hard way. However, agreeing. I agree that the U.S. is not number one. We, however, are, we are Canada. We are the U.S.'s little brother. And for all the, uh, for all the benefits that the U.S. Uh, has in terms of, um, you know, in terms of a shrine enshrined in law by the Bill of Rights, we have as well. The only difference is we have a slight amendment in our Charter of Rights and Freedoms. Um, the the, pre, the Prime Minister, who finally made us an independent country, brought our, our ability to change our constitution out of the, government, the hands of the British government, who still registered us as a colony until 1982, back into our hands, brought forward a Charter of Rights and Freedoms, which allowed us the same exact rights, not uh, effectively as American citizens. The only difference is we explicitly state in our, in our uh, Charter of Rights and Freedoms that every individual's right ends where the other individual's right begins. My right to freedom of speech cannot infringe on my neighbor's right. If I say something, he has the exact opposite right to rebut me. He has the exact opposite right to rebut exact, you know, against what I'm saying. If I have a right to speak my mind, I do not have the right to petition. Yes, I, yes, in Canada, we are, it is illegal, or, well, if you follow the charter literally, we do not have the right to propose laws or something like that which could infringe our opponent's right to speak. The sort of petition which was carried out in this bullshit episode would not even be allowed in Canada because of the fact that it would infringe on someone else's right to freedom of speech. We Not only do we enshrine that right, we also enshrine the right, we restrain the people from being able to uh, infringe on that other person's right. My right to life and liberty does not infringe on someone else's right. I can have the right to, um, I can have the right by Canadian law to uh, pursue as much happiness and as resources as I, as I damn well want. Insofar as I cannot restrain someone else from, uh, from I, insofar as that I cannot d uh, try to injure bodily harm or find a way to restrain someone else from uh, being able to do that, as a minority, as a group, as as belonging to a group of a minority, I do not have the right to superimpose my rights over other people. Just insofar as that they don't have the right to discriminate against me either, which is where the whole thing about speech codes comes in in Canada. We do have, and that's where that whole um, ba balancing act comes in with Canada. You have the right to freedom of speech. You do not have the right to, an, uh, to, make, the li uh, to make the life of someone else in another group a living hell. <laughs> you know, that's where, that's where your right ends. You do not have the right to prevent them from speaking up on their end, too. So everybody's right is protected insofar as we consciously state that. And that also comes in our civil liberties point as well. If, um, you know, unlike the U.S., which has a Patriot Act right now, which has basically infringed it, um, in Canada, it is legally enshrined in our Charter of Rights and Freedoms. We have a counter to our rights and freedoms, and that's called the War Measures Act. And it's a one-time issue that, we, that has ever been uh, invoked, and there was a specific precedent that was set with it. Pierre Elliott Trudeau, our Prime Minister, um, during the one time that we ever invoked uh, something along the lines of a Patriot Act, we did a lot stronger. We invoked the War Measures Act, and we declared martial law. Yes, the government of our country declared martial law in 1987 in a um, in a small section of Quebec because of the fact that there was a par there was a terrorist group called the PLQ, who were actually trying to who were actually seizing um, members of the government and threatening to kill them 
um, because of the fact uh, because of the fact that they didn't want to be taken in, because of the fact that they didn't approve they didn't want the Canadian Constitution as it was at the time. Here's what uh, uh, Pierre Elliott Trudeau did. The majority of Canada had accepted it and ratified the uh, had ratified the Constitution. He, unfortunately, was unable to find, using conventional uh, police investigations, where these people were. So for the life and liberty of those people, uh, you know, for the life and liberty of those people, the, uh, certain other rights had to be suspended, like the right to a fair trial, but it was only done so temporarily. People who were, you know, who weren't even, uh, you know, who might have even had the slightest connection with the PLQ were arrested and detained without trial, and, uh, you know, and interrogated using non-appropriate techniques. Torture was never used. That, that was the one thing that was not condoned. But, um, but you know, they were allowed to be, uh, retrain, you know, um, uh, restrained without trial. Uh, they were allowed to, you know, cut off communication from their families and other stuff like that. And they did it um, to get information out of people as to where the heck these people, as to where the heck the, um, the hostages were being held and, you know, how to stop the PLQ. It worked. But here's the funny bit. And this is where the precedent came up. Every person who was arrested was released immediately afterwards unless there was actual evidence that could be brought up under normal criminal means afterwards. The, what, the few who were kept after the, uh, after the crisis was, were, was over were, were still kept, but they were pressed charges this time. They were brought before the criminal court system. They were tried and found guilty by, in front of a jury of their peers. Every single one of the people who was still tried were, cu were kept on charges of kidnapping, murder in a couple of cases, and uh, conspiracy to commit murder. Every single one of those people was tried, found guilty, and sentenced to prison terms. You see what I mean? That was the precedent. The one time that we ever did it, because there was a threat, we actually made sure that after the crisis was over, that those people were, get, were, uh, were, were given their rights again and were duly properly convicted under a court of law. <laughs> you know, so we, we keep, yes, uh, um, you know, here's another thing. Uh, where we uh, where we differ from the U.S. and I believe that this is one of the things which is better in our system than the American system. The American government system is purely based on electoral power. That people that uh, that you know that is purely based on electoral system. That people can be elected and voted in. That people can be elected and voted in. Um, you know, um, depending on term, and that therefore that you know. Um, you know that it's go therefore a, a lot freer of a process, and people have a lot more choice of voting. Right? Wrong. You guys only have a two-party system. The third party that is in existence is not even allowed to take part in presidential debates. Our Canadian system has at least five different parties that, are, that generally take part in prime ministerial debates and have several more that are allowed to run, uh, that are even allowed to run prime ministerial candidates um, in, the pre, uh, you know, in the presidential system, sorry, in the, in the parliamentary system. You don't have to run as an independent if you're not one of the five major parties. In the U.S., Green Party members have to run as independents. Uh, you know, as opposed to only Democrats or Republicans. That's the way the system has now founded itself. Canada, we have a freedom of, uh, of parties, and you're, vote, you're allowed to start a party or become an independent or what have you based on whatever the hell you want for a platform. You are allowed, you know, in terms of democratic system, uh, you know, for both for running for, uh, for, for, for the House of Commons and for prime ministerial. Oh, and here's the other thing. The prime minister, he's a member of parliament. He, can, he doesn't have a veto power like the president does in the U.S. He has to be outflanked by the rest of his party. So the executive, is, the, the executive uh, has a, you know, doesn't have a chance to be able to become too totalitarian. Now, granted, it's not as much of a check and uh, balance system for the House of Commons. That's why I still don't trust the government for as far as I can throw them, any more than you guys would trust your American government. You know, uh, it still attracts the corrupties. Here's another benefit which, uh, which happens with our Canadian system, which doesn't happen with yours. Yes, our government, is, um, unfortunately, uh, we have a Senate. Uh, our Senate is appointed for lifetime and, or until retirement. Basically, senators are appointed by the Prime Minister, then ratified by the Supreme Court, uh, ratified or not ratified by the Supreme Court, or, uh, and are ratified by Parliament, and they get to uh, sit in this separate house, uh, this separate um, counterpoint. They have minimal power. The only thing they can do is send, uh, is send bills on financing back twice um, send bills on financing back twice to the uh, uh, to ask for re uh, to ask for re amendments by the House of Commons. This is to prevent any sort of totalitarian systems or to uh, advise against long term issues. They can set they can work long term. On um, you know they they think long term because of the fact that they are in for considerably more years. They don't have to worry about what is in the polls or uh, you know what the what the population is thinking. They don't have to fall to ad populum fallacy and can work a lot more so on rationality. The downside of this, 
if it's a corruptee from a previous institution who's been put in, it just means the corruption stays longer. Luckily, that, luckily the uh, restraint counters that. 